<clears throat> hey guys. <clears throat> so, I'm out in my garden, finishing up the last few pepper plants that I'm planting right now. Um, I've already planted two, four, five, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Fourteen so far. Um, and I just figured I would hop on really quickly. You can tell I haven't really put much thought into anything for this video, so it is what it is. Um, but really quickly, I wanted to show you some of my tips for planting peppers. Sorry if my video quality is bad, as always. Still struggling with that. So, without further ado, these last two peppers I'm planting right now are Ancho variety. Um, these are some of the peppers that I've started from seed. So really, really actually very proud of these peppers. Um, Ancho is the dried form, Poblano is the fresh form, so it's the same pepper, just different versions get different names. Um, I like drying them out and dehydrating them and making like ground up chili powder for chili or tacos or whatever. So I'm doing Ancho peppers right now, I have two of them left. And again, I know I've said this before, but mini blinds, cut up mini blinds, they're like the best plant markers. So. What I want to do is for peppers you want to plant them a little bit deeper than what they are in the container um, but not like as deep as a tomato like a tomato you can deep you can bury that sucker neck deep and um, peppers are important oh, sorry girl <laughs> garden season I can't do fun things when it's garden season anyway um, up to like you can do like about an inch or so for peppers. So again, tomatoes, you can plant really deep. Peppers, a little bit deeper than most. But um, so what you do is you just flip it outside, upside down like this. This is how I do it. Um, and this is the perfect stage of growth. Like the roots are starting to wrap around a little bit, but you can tell it's not root bound. It's not stressed out. Um, the plant has just sort of reached its edges and it's starting to look for more space. So this is the perfect um growth stage i'm gonna say they're not all like this sometimes they're just wrapped in a big giant tangled mess but this is ideal because it stresses the plant out less so what i'll do is i'll just very very carefully kind of use my fingers to comb the roots especially if they've really wrapped around i want to kind of encourage that root to come back out in the different direction because i've learned if you leave them wrapped, they will continue to grow and get bigger and bigger in that same circular pattern and actually choke out the rest of the roots. So as much as you can without like really just mangling it, take it and just sort of, it's okay if a chunk of dirt falls off, it's fine. Um, I don't go crazy about it. I just sort of, you can tell, it's kind of what I do. I just sort of comb it down, get them all sort of in the right-ish direction and then that's good enough. So. What I've done is I've dug a hole, hole here with my spade and I've just basically stabbed the soil to loosen it up around about twice the width of the root ball. So, you know, I got about a hole about that big right now. And I just, I'm just loosening it up. Try not to tell the garden as much as possible. You want to leave all that naturalness to its workings with the worms and stuff. But do a root ball hole about, like I said, twice the size of the root ball. And I'm going to bury this. You can see like that's where the first node of leaves were and it will start to grow more. I don't want to bury it past that. So that's about an inch. Um, and I'll show you the rest of my peppers that I've already planted, what it looks like. But you can bury it up until about that point. Just make sure you don't bury that root node because, or that leaf node there because it will invite diseases and all this different stuff and it's not really necessary. So I've dug my hole. What I normally do is I set it in there just to dry run it, kind of see where I'm at with the soil level. That's a little bit deep, especially when I start pressing it down. So I'm just going to take another little handful, sort of fill it in just a little bit, set it back down in there. And that should be just about perfect when I, when I tamp it down. So I'm going to take it back out. I'm also going to add a little sprinkle of this. Get yourself some of this. I swear by this. This is like my secret sauce i guess if you will i've had some friends come over and be like what is your secret sauce like how do you get your stuff to be so freaking ginormous one it's organic obviously i put a lot of time and effort into it 
but I also plant everything with this biotone starter and it helps to reduce um, transplant shock. It gets them off to a little, you know, gives them some turbo charge, if you will. So I take a little, just a pinch of this and I just, I don't know, maybe that's half a tablespoon-ish, a teaspoon-ish. And I just kind of use my fingers and I just rake it in, just mix it in just a little bit. So when I put this plant in here, it's going to get that hit of like really quick food. Um, again, since it's organic, it's not going to burn the roots. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. It's going to be a slow release, but it's going to be right there where this plant needs it the most at the bottom of the root system. So I'm going to set it in, make sure it's where I want it to be. And then I just take my dirt and pile it over. And then I just take it very gently and press it down. That's to remove any air pockets, fill in any air pockets. Because if you have an air pocket, the roots will air prune themselves. When it reaches that air pocket, it will stop growing because it's, it, that's just what they do. That's why soil blocks are so awesome. But here we go. All right. So I tamp it in. Make sure you mark it or you will forget what you just planted. And then last but not least, I will take my hose. What do I do with my hose? And I will shower it in. Now I'm just using the shower setting. Um, I have well water, which I always forget about that people don't have. It's a big difference, I think. So if you are on your typical um, city water, I highly recommend getting gallon jugs of water and letting them sit out and dechlorinate. Um, if you don't have, obviously a rain barrel or rain catchment system is the best possible drink for your plants. Um, but if you don't have that, um, very least consider filling up a whole bunch of like empty milk jugs or gallon whatever wash out some vinegar of your yard or something I don't know get some jugs leave the top off and let it sit out for a few days to dechlorinate just like you would a fish tank um, and that helps to kind of remove some of those chemicals from your city water that your plants might not love just just a little tip um, but as I water in a really good I'm gonna flood it I'm gonna let it sink down. Everything will soak in really well. Um, hey Heather. And once I see all of the water settle down, I just go back one more time and I just pretty firmly will press all around it. And you can see that you'll have some air bubbles pop up and that's perfect. It's exactly what you want. Just sort of take the rest of your dirt, even it out a little bit. Because, you know, you're going to have, like, mounds of dirt when you're flying things everywhere. And I will show you an up-close view of what this looks like for the depth of planting. And that's it. That's as easy as it is. Um, if you've noticed, I've also planted them at night. Dusk, nighttime is the perfect time to plant your plants, especially if you're in a southern climate like us um, here in Somerville, South Carolina. Because the heat of the day will legit, like, murder your plants. So you want to plant them at night because it gives them the whole evening, all of the nighttime without the stress of the sun to kind of get used to their new home. Um, and you can also even for the next couple days, put a little bit of shade cloth over it that will help reduce the shock of transplant sometimes. But if you have to choose, I always, always, always choose to plant my stuff at night because it's just peaceful out here. And like I said, it reduces the transplant shock a little bit without having to be in the heat of the day. If you have to do it in the morning, um, again, I understand life happens. Sometimes you can't get home until it's dark. Definitely put some sort of shade cloth, even if it's just like you put a bucket in where in front of the plant where it would shade at the, like the highest part of the day, noon or whatever, that'll give it at least a little bit of protection from that super strong heat. So let me wash off my hands and I will come grab the camera and show you what the rest of the plants look like. I'm gonna wash it on my hand, wipe it on my shirt, because that's just, you know, that's just how I do things here. I know you don't want it close to me, but I'll turn this around. All right, so this is the, the bed that I'm finishing up planting here. I've already done these plants. This is, um, I've got five banana plants here. I plan on pickling some banana peppers this year, so I'm doing a bunch of banana plants. 
um, but you can see right there is where the soil surface is and that's what I was talking about that leaf node that will grow new little branches this one's already on its way so you can see it's on its way here and the reason why another tip on peppers the reason why this one is so much more prolific these little side branches than say the one I just planted was because I actually topped this pepper you can see here let's see if it focuses come on focus see where that cut mark is oh my gosh come on guys there we go you see where that cut mark is right there uh, about a week or so ago I snipped off the top of the plant yes I know it was traumatic for me probably more than the plant but I topped it um, so you see here I did not top this one it still has this you know original leaf growth here or growth I don't know whatever this thing is called I snipped it like right there so I got rid of this whole top part which was uh, torturous for me I made sure it obviously had enough bottom leaves but this was the reason why because when you top off the growth tip there the growth tip that's what I was looking for at the top it stimulates the plant to start growing. It actually has hormones in the top of that plant. So once that hormones are cut off, it starts to stimulate new growth. So all of these little side shoots start to grow. And you can see, they're all over every little um, crook of the plant there. It started new, a new branch, which is exactly what we want. Because that means a bushier, sturdier pepper plant that's closer to the ground. It's not gonna be this giant, leggy, like crazy pepper plant. And you'll get more peppers eventually that way because the more branches you have the more flowers and the more leaves are going to grow off that plant so it might seem like murder when the plant is little but down the road it will be way better for your plants because i've not done this sometimes with some of my pepper plants and they were this giant tall leggy giraffe looking plant with like four peppers so take the time to trim it i know it's hard it's really hard but that's that's kind of a prime example right there what happens when you go ahead and you take it and you top it like that um, even this one you can see this was more dramatic i did this actually this is the plant i overwintered but you can see i snipped this one off at the bottom and then it started all these little you know branch stem things i don't i don't I'm, words are hard for me right now it's late at night um <laughs> but that's that's what i'm working on same thing like here that's the node like I was saying, because I did not top this one, it has not started growing the extra branches yet. So that's a pretty tall tale sign to me that I'm going to go ahead and chop this off and feel pretty good about that. Because um, and that one, you can tell the bottom one's not buried. So that's the perfect, it's the perfect location for your last leaf node. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, I'm going to get back to finishing this up. And I'll take you a little garden tour, I guess, if you're here. Why not? Right? You're hostage. I'll take you hostage. So, banana peppers are here. I have the two ancho peppers that I'm growing there. Just planted one of my um, bigger... Yeah, just planted this today. This is a giant um, Mexico midget. And I have little... Where are they? I'll show you. I have little tomatoes already. Super excited. This is my kids' favorite. They love these little... Can you see? They're so cute. Um, they love these little teeny tiny snacker tomatoes. They're like jelly bean sized little cherry tomatoes. I think I have one or two still available for sale. If you want one, let me know. Um, I have posted a list of all the things I'm selling. But just planted that. I use these rebar cages for my tomato plants because yes, they will get a solid seven feet tall easily. At least mine will. Um, some green onions that I have planted from the grocery store. <laughs> yes, this was like the 99 cent package of green onions I got from Aldi's and rooted it, stuck it in the ground, and now it's the size of like a baseball club. So, you know, that was a happy, happy mistake. It's going to flower now, so I'm just gonna let it do its thing. Carrots, uh, what else did I just plant? Just planted all these peppers. These are my sweet bell peppers. So, one final tip. And I'll turn this around to show you, because you don't want to look at me. Um, I've got two red, two orange, two yellow, and I don't even know. Something else. Two, four, six. That's it. Nope, that's not it. What else is this? Gold, red. Oh, a habanado, which is a, 
a heatless, spiciless habanero. Anyway, if you have sweet peppers, plant them away from your spicy ones. So I know banana is not spicy, but ancho can be spicy um, because they will cross pollinate potentially and make your sweet pepper spicy. <laughs> potentially. At the very least, it stops your ability to say seed save because like I would, I wouldn't, I'd be nervous about cross pollinating and saving some sweet red peppers and end up with a jalapeno spicy. <laughs> so if you have the space, separate your um, spicy peppers from your sweet ones. It'll just kind of event that, uh, uh, prevent that cross pollination. Now, like I said, my banana peppers are typically grown as a sweet pepper, but my husband likes everything spicy. So I'm okay if it gets a little bit of heat from those anchos. Actually, I would prefer it. So that's kind of, I did actually do that intentionally, put those two together over there. So, all right, other than that, I just got the lettuces are growing great right now in South Carolina. It's looking really nice. Um, potatoes are taking off like crazy. I'll be done here in a second. I know you guys are probably like, you said peppers, I'm done. Um, I have some purple potatoes in here and I have four potatoes because I couldn't choose. <laughs> they look really, really good. Um, I'm gonna have to actually add another layer what I do is I screw boards on. As the potatoes grow, I'll add more dirt in there because you can see it's already getting pretty stocky. Um, and I'll add some more dirt and I'll mound it up and I'll fill it up to about, I don't know, about there. I'll leave the top five or six inches of leaf growth and fill the rest of it with dirt so that all of these stalks are covered. And then more potatoes will grow off of the, um, off of the stalks and whatever more roots tubers things yeah that but i will take and i will screw on more boards and i'll keep that process going so in the end i'll have this giant box full of dirt and potatoes and when i unscrew them hopefully i'll have a lot of potatoes so all right i'm gonna go hopefully you guys are getting your gardens in soon and getting your hands in the dirt let me know if you have any questions bye guys